What's going on growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. You are being lied to about growing in containers today. Me and Tucker are going to share with you five major advantages to growing in containers rather than in the ground. Let's go! For my first few years of gardening, I only planted in the ground. I was under the impression that it was way better planting in the ground than in pots. Then I decided I wanted to try to get more out of my space. I thought a good way to do that would be to plant some stuff in pots, in containers, underneath my fruit trees. I thought this would be a good idea because planting in pots would make it so that I wouldn't be disturbing the tree's roots when I'm planting stuff and also the plants in pots wouldn't have to compete with the tree to get water and nutrients and stuff. Now what I do is I plant things like this. My tomatoes underneath my peach trees. Because my peach tree is pruned to an open center, this acts really nice and allows me to sort of use the peach tree as a trellis. You can see the tomato is growing up the peach tree. Because it's a vine, I allow it to vine up the tree. In the same way this would happen in a natural forest where a vining plant would climb up a tree. So you can see I'm getting an advantage of growing in pots under this tree. Another thing I like to do now also is I like to plant my eggplants under some of my trees like my cherry tree. You'll see I have a bunch of eggplants in containers growing underneath my cherry tree and I also plant things like peppers in containers underneath my hazelnut tree. Whether you just want to get more out of the space you are already growing in or if you only have limited space like on a patio or balcony, growing in containers gives you the opportunity to grow almost anywhere. Now that I've been growing in containers for years, I just have absolutely fallen in love with it and I've noticed some huge advantages to growing in pots. The first major advantage to growing in containers is that you don't even have to deal with soil problems. Issues like soil borne diseases such as fusarium wilt and verticillium wilt which can devastate your plants, especially tomatoes that are susceptible to this kind of disease. Also, you don't have to worry about pest issues in the soil. Things like the garden symphylin which I had some problems with in the spring. If you grow in containers, you really don't have to deal with that. Another thing is when you're growing in containers, you don't have to deal with terrible soil, whether it's like super rocky or all clay. I mean, that doesn't really matter because you're growing in pots. And if you want to try to heal that soil by doing like a sheet mulch and letting the worms do the work, that takes a little bit of time. So while the worms are working, you can grow in containers and still be getting harvests. The second major advantage to growing in containers is that they're portable. You can move them around as needed. So let's say you want your plants to get more sun. You can move the pots in locations to be able to track the sun better. Or if you're like me right now and you're in a heat wave, you could take some of your plants and put them in an area that gets filtered sun, like these peppers here. Look how well they're growing. The strong beating down sun isn't stressing them out too much. They're not wilting or anything. They look really healthy. They're loaded with peppers and that's what I really like to see. That's why I like growing them in some of the filtered sun of the hazelnut trees. I think it helps a lot. Another thing is if one of your plants gets some uh, disease issues, whether that be pest or any kind of issue, you can kind of remove that from the other plants and deal with it on its own. This way that issue doesn't spread to some of your other plants. You can kind of single it out and work on it. This guy's walking around having a lot of fun. He's hanging out here. It's pretty hot out, but he's always out here. This guy never quits, never gives up. He's the king of the garden. He's also the protector. So he needs to make sure that he's watching out for his whole garden. Another great thing about moving your plants is, say you want to overwinter your peppers or something. When they're in a pot, you could take them inside and let them overwinter and then bring them back outside and grow the same pepper in the spring. You could do the same thing with herbs too. You can bring those herbs inside and still snack on the herbs later in the season. The final great thing about growing containers for the fact that they're movable is if you're someone who can't bend over that great, you can take your containers, put them up on an area where it's much higher so you don't have to bend over to work in them. So there's so many advantages just from the containers and plants being portable. Let's grab a pepper and see if Tuck wants one. Let's grab him an apple sweet pepper. This one is a really good one. Tuck, what do you think, boy? What do you think, Tuck? Want this, boy? See if he wants one of these. I'm sure he'll like this. These ones have a nice crunch to them, too. I'll have to taste this one after he does. Break him off a little piece, and then I'll have some. There you go, boy. And then I'll taste this one, too. Mmm, so sweet, so good, nice crunch to it. This guy loves snacking on his fresh peppers in the garden. He's always hunting for a snack and he earns them so we got to make sure we keep him well fed so he can keep working. 
If you guys love seeing Tuck in the videos, make sure to spam some hearts down low. Also, check out the merch down at jamesprissyoni.com. Grab a Gardening is Life shirt and be part of the team. So dang good to eat fresh right from the garden, even if it is from a pot. Anyone can be growing this food right in their backyard, on their patio, or anywhere. The third major advantage to growing in containers rather than in the ground or even in a raised bed is that you're going to use less soil and you can have more control over the quality of the soil. Also, the plants don't have to compete for space in the soil or even nutrition or even water because they have their own personal space. Each container is like the plant's own uh, their own personal raised bed, which is cool. Because of that, you can tailor the kind of soil you are making to the kind of plant you're growing. For instance, if you're growing cucumbers, you can make a more alkaline soil. Soil. If you're growing tomatoes, you can make a more acidic soil. So it's almost like you make a personal little home for each kind of plant that you're growing. When I make my soil, I typically use as a base cocoa core. It's uh, completely inert. So it doesn't, have, it doesn't have a high or low pH. And when I grow things like tomatoes or things that like acidic soil, sometimes I'll use peat moss. Mostly I like using cocoa core the best though because it's, in my opinion, the best for pots, but it, it could be a little more expensive sometimes. So in a different video, if you want, I could go into detail how I make my own personal soil for my containers. But today we're just gonna try to stick with the advantages. I've got some potatoes here, you'll notice. I'm gonna harvest these potatoes and then see what we got in this bed right here. This is the strawberry paw potato. So you can grow so many different kinds of plants in containers. Like I love, I showed you uh, tomatoes, eggplants, peppers. Now let's see how the actual potatoes do. I think I should just maybe dump the whole bucket. Let me just first pull some out, pull this out. Actually, no, nah, no, nah. let's dump the whole bucket and see what we get. So I allowed the soil to dry out relatively well before I'm harvesting these so the potatoes aren't super dirty. Let's flip this over. You gotta, just gotta move this out of the way. You can see I used cocoa core for this. You can see a lot of my basic mixture and then let's just see, we should see some nice potatoes in here. You can see this nice color to the potatoes. Some nice size ones. Not my biggest harvest ever, but not too shabby too. I planted these a little late in the season, but still doing pretty dang, still did pretty dang good. Keep stacking them up. That looks like it's most of them. And if I want, I could just recompost all this soil here and use it again in the future. As long as I use a hot compost and I remove any of the pathogens and, pathogens and stuff because we don't want to be spreading diseases from one year to the next. Not too bad though, some nice looking potatoes in here. The fourth major advantage to growing in containers is probably one of my favorites and it might be for you too. When you grow in containers, there is little to no weeding. And as we know, weeding is one of the worst parts about gardening. So right here, this is about going to be the extent of the weeding you're going to need to do. Looks like I have a little wood sorrel, I think this is, popped up in here. All I'm gonna have to do is just pop that out. I didn't put mulch around this plant, which I should have. You can see a lot of my other plants like here, I've got mulch around it, which will definitely help when growing in containers. But this right here, I'm growing a moringa tree right in a container. I think it looks cool. I'll eat it as an edible because you can eat the leaves. So I grow it as an edible I meant and you can eat the leaves which is really cool. So that's another added advantage to growing in containers. You can do like experimental things because uh, it's, no, it's not a big deal if they do bad and you could also grow invasive species like mints and stuff in containers because you don't have to worry about them spreading throughout the whole entire garden. So it's so fantastic not have to weed much. It makes gardening so much easier. So. It's just another great advantage to growing in containers. The fifth major advantage to growing in containers is that you're going to be using less water and less fertilizer because the area that you're growing in is super concentrated. So think about it. We only have to put enough water into this one pot here. Instead of having a bunch of plants in a large raised bed and watering that whole raised bed in, you could just water this one plant just by 
watering the bucket. Just make sure when you water that, there's something underneath to catch the water. And you don't want to be over watering or you're going to be washing out a lot of your fertilizer. Fertilizing is nice too. You're, go you're going to use less of it because just like the watering is concentrated, so also will the fertilizer be concentrated in one location. So you end up going through less of it, which is a great advantage. So another thing that I like about growing things like peppers and eggplants and stuff in containers, an added bonus, is that like we're going, we're getting late into the season. So I need to take out a lot of my crops from my raised beds and then put in my fall stuff. But the only thing that's bad about that is this is now when the peppers start to really producing heavy. So right when the peppers are really producing heavily, really well in my raised beds, it's almost time to take them out. So when we grow them in pots like this, when they're getting into their uh, into a real high level of production, we're fine growing them in pots. We could remove the summer stuff from our raised bed and get our fall stuff in. We don't have like some peppers and stuff lingering in the bed that kind of makes it so we can't completely shift over to the fall stuff in the raised beds because I like growing things in like polycultures. So that's just another added bonus. You'll notice right here, this is a habanada pepper. It looks like a, like a hot pepper because it's in the habanero family, but it's actually a sweet habanero. So it's pretty cool, the habanada. Let me take a bite of it real quick. Mm. Still has that classic habanero like kind of flavor and it feels like it's gonna get super hot but then the heat never comes. It's unique, it's delicious and it's uh, really cool. Another thing you can try experiments with in your container garden because if it doesn't work, that's fine. You're not taking up too much space because uh, you're just growing in pots. Right boy? When growing in containers, it's not all advantages. There's some disadvantages as well. One of them is that the plants dry out a lot quicker than they would in the ground. So when you get a plant that gets large like this in the container, it could dry out relatively quickly. So you need to stay on top of watering it or within a few days, it can cause a lot of damage. Another thing is growing it in containers initially to get started can be relatively expensive, especially if you need to buy pots and things. So a good idea is to try to get some recycled pots. You could even grow in like a tote that you find like in the garbage or in the house that you aren't using. That's what I did uh, early in the season and the plants grew great in totes. I like to use these five gallon buckets that I got from a big box store. They're food safe and they seem to be lasting a number of years because they're relatively thick. So I like growing in these. It's pretty nice. Another disadvantage is uh, fluctuations in temperature can be a little more stressful on the plants because they don't have like the buffer of the ground to absorb some of that stress. But you just got to kind of baby them a little bit more. That's why you could, the fact that they're portable is nice. So you could bring them into like locations that get a little bit of shade. And another disadvantage to growing in containers is there seem to be like a little bit harder to cover. Like you can't like cover them with an insect netting because they get relatively large. Like all my raised beds that I grow in, I have covers on them so I can use an insect netting to cover them to keep the pests out and stuff. So when it grow, comes to containers, it's kind of harder to separate them from pests because it's, I guess, a little tougher to make a covering unless maybe in the future I should just build a whole area that that is enclosed with like some kind of insect netting covering to put all my pots in. So that's most of the disadvantages that I can kind of think of off the top of my head. So I can't say that like growing in containers is gonna solve all your problems, but in my opinion, there's so many advantages to doing it. So even if you have a food forest like me, you can get so much more out of the space by growing in containers. So there's so many great things about it. And I have to say in the past, I was like, I was kind of a hater when it came to growing containers. I figured I had enough space to just plant in the ground. But my whole mind shifted about that. You know, I feel like, I feel like I was almost being lied to that like growing containers is worse than the ground. I don't think it is. They both, ha both have their advantages and growing in containers definitely has a lot of advantages. Right, boy? That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you got something out of it. So the idea with this video was for me and Tuck to shed some light on some of the advantages to growing in containers and hopefully encourage you guys to get some stuff on the ground. Saying you don't have the space because you're on a patio or something, in my opinion, that's not a good enough excuse. Everyone should be growing some of their own food, even if it's some fresh herbs. Even if you don't have space for a patio, you could still be growing some stuff inside on a windowsill. Planting some of your own food and getting to taste it, no matter how small it is, it's just such a great feeling. So we want to share that with as many people as possible. Me and Tuck wanted to mention to uh, check out the merch down at jamesprigioni.com. 
grab a gardening is life shirt, grab a grow shirt, grab a team grow shirt and be part of the team. We also want, I also want to send a thank you to Tuck for this video. It's hot out here. He never quits. He's always working. We love this guy. Spam some hearts down low if you love little homie in the videos. He's such a sweet guy. I also wanted to send a thank you to one of our new channel members, Jay Noella Edwards. Thanks for bar being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for having your hand in everything we're doing out here. Uh, your contribution means the world to me and the little guy, so we wanted to thank you so much for that. It looks like there might be some storms coming, which would be nice. We need some rain. It's been really dry around here. The garden's still kicking out a lot of food, and we're still having a blast eating it and getting ready for the next season. Tuck and James will be back again real soon. We. Oui.